let me introduce next speaker is Kang Zhen. He received his PhD in computer engineering from Kemsom University in 2014. Uh, his master in communication information systems from the Graduate University of Chinese Academy of Sciences back in 2008 and his bachelor degree in electronics and information engineering from Huazong University of Science and Technology back in 2005. He is now assistant professor at Southern Illinois University doing research in emerging networks such as vehicle networks and SGN. The title of his talk is Improving Wireless Network Performance Under MPTCP-Based Multipath Access. Please join me in welcoming Kang. Well, thank you for the introduction. So this is a quite a big room, so I have to turn on my classroom mode. Uh, okay, so I'm glad here to present our work about uh, multipass uh, TCP-based multipass access in wireless networks. Uh, this is a work together with my students, Xinxing, Mijana Plush, and our collaborators, Jing Wei Liu and James Martin from Clemson University, South Carolina. So my presentation will basically have five parts. I will first give a background introduction. Then I will print some of the measurement and analysis that we have done that shows the issues when we have multiple paths, multi-path access in wireless networks. And then we try to solve the issues. We propose a solution design and we give some uh, performance evaluation in the end. Finally, I will conclude the work. So first of all, I think, I, I believe like most of you have already known the concept of multipass TCP or MPTCP. So I will just give a brief introduction here. So MPTCP is an on ongoing IETF standard that allows a single TCP connection to operate a number of uh, interfaces or paths in a transparent manner. So as shown in this simple figure here, when MPTCP is enabled from the application's perspective, they only, or it only says a single connection, a single TCP connection. But the underlying part may consist a number of parallel subflows, and each subflow can, over, can go over a different uh, interface or pass, and all those subflows are transparent to the application. And thanks to the contribution from the IP networking lab at UCL Belgium, we currently have Linux kernel MPTCP implementation for experiments and research. So in this implementation, uh, implement, implementation, every subflow is implemented actually as a TCP socket. So my work actually is in the wireless domain. I think that the, well, actually not all, many people feel that the multi-pass capability gives some opportunities to improve the uh, quality or service quality in wireless networks. Specifically, we can enable multi-pass access at the TCP level. So in this case, a TCP connection, or like we call it the MPTCP connection, is able to simultaneously employ a number of wireless connections at the same time. So it can start one sub-connection over one wireless connection, and then it will be able to aggregate the bandwidth from a number of wireless connections. So this improves the bandwidth performance. More importantly, uh, the MPTCP connection can transparently add a new wireless connection or phase out disconnected wireless connections in a transparent manner. It is just adds new subflow over the new connection and terminate the subflow over the disconnected wireless connection. So all this process will be transparent to the application so this would improve the mobility resilience for uh, wireless devices. So the figure here gives uh, an example in the context of connected vehicle. So in this case, we assume this vehicle in the beginning, for example, say at T1, it has two wireless connections to both AP1 and AP2. Then it will be able to launch an MPTCP connection that uh, utilizes both wireless connections to aggregate the throughput from the both access points. While well, the vehicle may move forward, it may move out of the range of a, wi uh, of a wireless access point, for example, at T2. Oh. The vehicle moves out of the range of AP1, so the wireless connection to AP1 is disconnected. But as long as it is still within the range of AP2, the MPTCP connection will still be alive. 
because the subflow over AB2 is still there, so this won't cause a disruption or cause a disconnection of the whole MPTCP connection. Afterwards, it may be able to, when it further moves, it may be able to establish new connections. Then it, the MPTCP connection can add this new connection to the MPTCP connection by adding a new subflow over this uh, new AP3, so it will be able to aggregate the bandwidth from two wireless connections again. So those are the advantages here. So we think those advantages can benefit a number of wireless applications like uh, the video streaming, the AR, VR, AR, or connected vehicles. But generally, I think all, I mean, this multi-pass access will be able to benefit uh, wireless applications that require reliable and high throughput wireless service at mobility. So due to those advantages, we have uh, a number of researchers in this topic. And I only list some representative work here. And uh, there are, of course, there are a lot more like in the literature. So, but uh, this research have systematically studied the uh, benefits on throughput and mobility when applying MPTCP in wireless domain. Well, in our opinion, we still feel that this something is missing. We look at those papers, we found that almost all this work look from the perspective of end devices. They care about the throughput of end devices, they care about the mobility resilience of end devices. How would the multi-pass access affect the overall network performance has not been well examined so far? So this drives our work. We first try to examine the network performance and the multi-pass access. We identify some issues and we analyze the reasons. We then try to solve these issues. But we do not simply solve the issues. We want to keep, preserve the benefits of multi-pass access while solving those uh, the Vice impacts, we propose a solution principle that can attain this goal and we also develop a corresponding solution system. So the next part is some measurement and analysis. So we conducted NS3 based experiment for scale reason. So we simulated an area of 200 meter by 200 meter with one IT base station and three Wi-Fi access points. Those Wi-Fi access points are deployed or are configured over different channels for, for the interference consideration. Uh, we have 30 devices randomly placed in this area and we randomly pick a percentage of them to be multi-pass users. The remaining devices are single-pass users, like legacy users that they would only try to access one access point. Well, it will be either on Wi-Fi or ITE based on the quality to the link quality to the closed Wi-Fi access point. Uh, we tested with two different congest control algorithms. Runner is a standard TCP congest control. Olia is one developed for IP TCP particularly. So we measured the throughput of the devices. The results are shown in those two figures. Let us first look at the top figure. We can say that when the percentage of multipass users increases, the throughput of all users, we sum up the throughput of all users, we found that it keeps decreasing. So this means that the overall network performance is reduced under the multipass access. We then look at the single pass users. The pattern is similar. The more multipass users we have, the lower average throughput those single pass users could obtain. So that means the fairness to those users is also impaired here. So what are the reasons for those like uh, negative impacts? So for the throughput degrading, the reason is actually not complex. That is because for wireless network, the maximum throughput of wireless access point usually is related to the number of connections it serves and their link qualities. Basically, the more connections or the more low quality connections, the lower throughput the access point can achieve. So let us look at the multipass access. Multipass access would easily bring in more connections. So that would uh, uh, increase the contention and the overhead at the access point and lower its throughput. What's more, multipass users, we can easily imagine that they are, they, they are likely to be aggressive in aggregating all available connections. Even those connections are weak, 
they may still take it. Anyway, a penny is a penny. So this would further worsen the degrading, okay? So I will give some analysis by modeling the throughput of Wi-Fi AP to show this point. So Wi-Fi AP, well, early versions of Wi-Fi AP adopts the fairness, uh, throughput of fairness threaded. So that means it tries to transmit the same amount of packets for all connections. So suppose we have N connections. So in one circle, we will be able to transmit N packets. So that means N times SP amount of data, where SP is the size of a packet. The time of a circle is the sum of the time for each connection to transmit one packet. Well, so that is the sum of TI here. So TI is affected by the average number of retransmission and the physical data rate of the connection. So ultimately, we can say the Wi-Fi AP throughput TW can be represented in this form. Then let us look at what changes the multipass access would bring us. When we have multipass access, we are going to have more connections. That means the chance of collision would increase. That would make the average number of retransmissions. The K bar would increase. That would lower the overall throughput TW. Meanwhile, if we, we replace some connections with poor connections, poor, a poor connection has a low physical rate. So that would make the average value of one over RR increased. So that would also lower the throughput. So that is for the throughput degrading. Well, um, for the fairness issue, we think there are two major reasons here. First, the throughput of wireless AP is reduced when we have multipass access, as I have explained in previous few slides. Second, or well, what I think is the most important one, wireless access points, they do not differentiate multipass users or single pass users. They would try to treat every connection fairly. So as a result, for a multipass user with two connections, it can easily aggregate the bandwidth from two connections or aggregate the resources from two access points. While in the same scenario, a single pass user can only get the maximum out of the two possible connections. So that means the single pass users easily receive less bandwidth when some devices turn to multipass access. So that is the measurement analysis. We found some issues and the causes. Basically, the multipass access would be able to bring in more connections, particularly more weak connections. That just will make the network not be able to do well. So we try to solve those issues here, but the first challenge we face here is that we found the two contradicting requirements. On one hand, multipass access, we have seen that it causes some issues to the overall network performance. So we have to control it, we have to constrain it. On the other side, the multipass access brings some interesting benefits, as I mentioned in the very beginning. We want to keep it. So, Therefore, we do not try to say, argue which one is the one we want. We try to balance the two requirements. So we wanted to preserve the benefits to the maximum extent. We definitely cannot preserve, preserve them all the time, but we want to preserve them to the maximum extent while solving those issues. How could we do that? We rely on an important observation. So the observation here is that those advice impacts and the throughput or fairness over an access point are meaningful or they're substantial only when other users' bandwidth demands are not satisfied. Otherwise, if all users' bandwidth demands are satisfied, they're all happy. <coughs> and it does not bother anyone if there's any advice impacts. So we say no one gets hurt. So this simple example uh, further demonstrates this point. So in this case, we have one MPTCP user, it tries to access both AP1 and AP2 at the same time. However, it's a little bit far away from AP2, so the link to AP2 is quite weak. So in this case, based on our previous analysis, we can say that the overall throughput of AP2 is reduced. But what if we assume that the single pass TCP or single pass user over AP2 its bandwidth demand is quite small and it still can be satisfied in this case. And it does not get any hurt. So it does not bother anyone. So in this case, we say the impact is not substantial and we do not need to actually 
have any intervention here. So that is the start point of our solution. And our solution method basically is like, we should allow multipass access as long as there's no congestion in the network. If there's no congestion, that means everyone's bandwidth demands have satisfied. In case there's a congestion, we needed to do something. We needed to surprise the multipass access to mitigate their advice impacts. Meanwhile, in this process, we needed to take care of the multipass users. We needed, should say, to exempt the best connection of a multipass user from this suppression under congestion. Why? That is because we want to make sure that the multipass user can get at least the same bandwidth over its best connection as if it is a single pass user. If we do not exempt this connection, the multipass user actually will be surprised possibly be surprised over all connections. That's unfair to multipass user. So multipass user should get at least the same as if it is a single pass user. So that are the ideas here. So what does this method indicate? It indicates that when there's no congestion, we can allow devices to use multipass access to multipass capability freely. As long as there is congestion, we should constrain the so multipass access has to retreat. It may retreat all to the level that the multipass access rolls back to single pass access. So in a summary, our overall principle here is that both multipass users and the single pass users' ability to obtain bandwidth should remain the same as if they all are single pass users. In this way, we will be able to keep those benefits while prevent those uh, advice, those bad impacts from turning to be substantial. So that is a solution method. The next task is to implement those methods. We have two immediate questions. First, where are we to enforce the solution method? So where we should have that intervention? Uh, we can easily say we can do this on the device side or on the network side. I believe there will be a lot of debate here, but in this work, we choose a network side because we are trying to protect the overall network performance. So I think it's a job for the network operators who want to do something on the network side. Well, the next question is how do we implement the solution method? We, we do not want to propose too many changes to the current wireless infrastructure because that would make it harder to be deployed in reality. So we look into the software dependent networking for this purpose because I think will give us a global view of the network. So we can easily monitor uh, the flow statistics, we can monitor congestions, and I think will give us the ability to manipulate flows. We wanted to, for example, constrain multipass access. We can use SDN to do that purpose. Uh, thirdly, SDN can be easily deployed without requiring too much changes to the network infrastructure. We can just deploy something, uh, replace or deploy some SDN switches. So the overall SDN-based multipass management system, so this is our solution system. It has two major components, a regulation center and an SDN system. The regulation center, as shown here, it functions as a control hub to implement the solution logic that I have mentioned earlier. While the SDN system is more like a supporting system, it connects necessary statistics, feed that to the regulation center to make a decision, and the regulation center will issue the regulation commands and use SDN to enforce those regulation commands. So let us look at the regulate detail, a little bit of detail about the regulation center. We can say, uh, well, actually, regulation center has two major items, the flow categorization and the flow regulation. The flow categorization basically identifies the base connection for each MPTCP user as a primary one. Then it classifies all flows into two types. Type one includes uh, all single pass flows and MPTCP subflows over the primary connection, while type two flows would include all other MPTCP subflows, basically MPTCP subflows over non-primary connections. Why we needed to classify them? Because we have different regulation uh, 
logics for those different uh, flows, as we say here. So the regulation, reg the flow regulation algorithm here, it would periodic periodically check the congest status of each access point. If there is a congestion, we need to constrain multi-pass access. How do we constrain that? We constrain tier two flows. They are non-primary subflows for MPTCP users. So what we do is, as long as we have congestion, we reduce the maximum bandwidth for tier two flows by half. So that is in this uh, part here, until a minimum value BW min. Here, here IL is idle level. So if idle level is less than or equal to one, we assume that there is no congest there is congestion here. If there is no congestion, we would increase the maximum bandwidth for tier two flows so that uh, it will be able to gain some added bandwidth. And here, alpha is an aggressiveness factor here. So the SDN system, actually, we do not have very complex design. We only require to deploy an SDN switch before each wireless access point. So the SDN switch will be able to connect the flow statistics and feed that to the uh, regulation center. So regulation also, it controls the bandwidth for flows through the meter bound for tier two flows. Like we say here, in every SDN switch, tier two flows are attached to a meter that limits maximum bandwidth. We will dynamically adjust the throughput for tier two flows through the meter bound here. And uh, the SDN controller interacts with the regulation center through its northbound APIs. So that is our solution design. Then let us look at some performance evaluation. So we adopt the same configuration as before. So we simulate, again, this 200 by 200 uh, meter area with one IT base station, three Wi-Fi access points, and 30 devices. But we are able to implement our system in this simulation. We use NS3DCE to integrate Linux kernel MPTCP. We also use NS3 OpenFlow 1.3 modular to implement the SDN system. So this can be, uh, I would say it's not that hard to implement. So we name our method as MPSDN, and uh, we configure the aggressiveness factor to 0.5 by default. We first look at how our system is able to protect the network performance. We basically did the same experiment and watched the same thing. So those two figures shows the throughput of all users and the throughput of single pass users respectively. So from the top figure, we can say that for all those labels with MPSTN enabled, the throughput decreases, but not to that much level as before without our system. And also for single pass users, the throughput always is higher than without our system enabled. So that means the overall network performance is better protected in terms of throughput and fairness to single pass users. We then look at how our system preserves the multipass benefits. Recall that we preserve multipass benefits by dynamically scale the multipass access. If there's congestion, we constrain. If there's no constraint, we allow it. So we would check whether the multipass benefits are dynamically scaled upon the change of idleness. So we switch the demand for tier one flows in two access points, AP1 and AP2, between five megabps and 10 megabps. So the, the bold line here represents the, the, the demand for tier one flows. We then measure the throughput of tier one flow and the tier two flows. We can see that the tier one flow, its throughput, their throughput can always follow the demand, which means that tier one flows demands are always satisfied. However, tier two flows are able to take the added bandwidth when the demand of tier one flows drop to this level. So that is a multi-pass benefit. We can say that we can dynamically scale here. So uh, I'm quite close to the amount of time, so I would just briefly introduce this figure. This figure, we evaluate the influence of execution interval. So we, our algorithm will be executed period, periodically. So we uh, vary the execution interval from one second to 3.5 seconds. And we found that 
we do not perform well when we have a small interval and a large interval. So we say we need a minimum execution interval. So we have some other uh, experiment results about the influence of other key factors or parameters which I'm going to omit here. So the conclusion here is that we checked the overall network performance on the MPTCP-based multipass access. We identified some issues and we also found the uh, reasons or analyzed the reasons. We then proposed the solution principle to balance the benefits and adverse impacts in a dynamic manner. So we propose, we further propose a mitigating system that implements this principle with the help of SDN. Our final comment here is that, in our opinion, turning from single pass access to multi pass access is not just adding one more pass. That is because in current wireless architecture, we map a connection to one user. But with multi pass access, a user may be mapped to multiple connections. So that means a lot of things, such as the fairness, the friendliness, the overall network performance, have to be carefully re-examined. And uh, we think those are very interesting topics, and we are still working on this. So that is all my presentation. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We give the hands. And I'll open up for two or maximum three questions. Yes, we have a few here in the middle. So should we start with Nils? So thank you for the presentation. I'm kind of curious. Do you assume that if I have multi-passes that, so I have multi-pass connections, that the network is all in one hand? Because if I run it nowadays, right, I have Wi-Fi and then using Wi-Fi here in the hotel and in parallel using 3G, 4G, whatever from a telecommunication provider. How can I implement your solution in such a scenario? Because they have no, they have not one common SDN architecture, right? If I got it right, you assume that all paths are in one backbone network, which is typically not the case nowadays. Yes, yes, I, I get, I think that is a very good point. So you are saying, basically I assume that we have operated that operates a number of different networks such, uh, actually this is a trend, like for current cellular operators, they are seeking Wi-Fi to supplement their cellular uh, towers. And uh, we also envision that uh, there will be significant network densification on the single operator uh, along with the development of 5G. So we think it is possible that a single operator may operate a number of different networks in one area so that we can have multi paths that go back to the single core network. And uh, actually, a good point here is that as I say, this is a solution on the network side. Actually, what you mentioned here is the drawback of the solution on the network side. So we are also looking at the solution on the device side. So that would not be an issue if those networks belong to different operators and they have different costs. So that's why I say we are still trying to think. But well, that is a very good point. And I have a very quick follow-up. So you have shown us a lot of performance metrics and you are always mentioning fairness. Have you also considered looking at fairness metrics? What, what do you mean by the fairness? Yeah, the fairness metrics like Jane's fairness index and stuff like this. Oh, the latency. Yeah, no, yeah, the fairness between the different users and also there are, there are metrics for this. You always were showing us the overall throughput, oh. but we're always talking about fairness, but oh. I've not seen fairness metrics. I'm wondering if they're in the paper or if you do not consider them. Yeah, okay, for the fairness consideration here, actually we, we think like for those single paths, we, we still look from the perspective of throughput. Because uh, for those single pass users, they did not do anything. They just keep accessing as before, only because some other users turn to multipass, their throughput, their maximum throughput is reduced. So we think this is a fairness issue to them. Because they, for no reason, they, they do nothing, but they get less resource from the access point. So we think that is a fairness in our perspective. All right. Uh, actually, my questions are quite similar. So the first one is that, uh, um, you know, MPTCP is something we do at the transport layer. Yes. We try to keep the application on the line network layer unchanged. But uh, your solution to this MPTCP problem is to bring in something that SDN, which needs replacement of all the switches, everything. So uh, do you think that is an overkill? 
All right, that's part one. And the part two is also about this fairness. It seems to me that the problem you are mentioning is due to the throughput fairness that you use at the access point. If you're using something like a time fairness, right, uh, perhaps the problem is gone. It, will that be true? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, very good points. So for the first question, MPTCP were able to aggregate the different connections in a transparent manner. But this does not mean that there's no issue, that is for sure. For example, if we have a fast pass, we have a slow pass. And we schedule packets to different paths. So those packets may arrive at the receiver out of order. So if we have an extremely bad pass, so this out of order issue may backfire to the good pass and also cause overall throughput to, to, to degrade. So I think that there are some issues, but ultimately I think the good feature is that we can have transparent aggregation of multipaths. So we can actually, this can solve the flow mobility issue here. Because in current network, if we wanted to move the TCP flow from one access point to another access point, it causes issues because IP address changes. But the MPTCP would make this process transparent. So I'm not sure whether this answers the first question. Mm -hmm. But for the second question, uh, yes. We currently only consider the throughput of fairness. If we look, and but I still think that is a critical issue because anyone, no one hopes that to get lower bandwidth without doing anything wrong. So that is our perspective here. Good. We have one, two, three. It will have to be very short questions because we need to give the floor to the third speaker. So a quick one. I have a very quick question. It seems that uh, you have the uh, performance evaluation through simulation, N3. Yes. So I was wondering if you have done any kind of a real world test bed uh, performance evaluation or not. Okay. So we did some real world experiment, but not to this scale because we do not have currently this like uh, a quite large test bed available for us to use. What we did is we did a simple scenario with one IT base station, two Wi-Fi access points, but very limited number, five or six uh, devices. So we found that the, the issues, the reason that we are we only presented simulation here because analysts uh, points us to the conclusion. Because the access point, if you look at its fairness strategy, if we have multiple connections and those connections are not differentiated, they will be treated fairly. So in this case, the throughput will be affected. So our analysis shows that, and our simulation also shows that, so that we are, uh, we are kind of confident that this will be a problem if people turn to use multipass aggressively. Okay, but yes, the small scale shows some similar trend in our experiment. We actually probably will add that to an extension of this paper later on. I, I, I was wondering how your system would behave when all the users are multipath users. Oh, that yeah, is... Because it's not in the simulations, you don't show the 100% multipath users. I think it comes right. to also the fairness question among multipath users. Well, even for multipath users, I would think the fairness issue be, becomes more tricky because for if we we have all multipass users, some may have two paths, some may have three paths. They're still different. So how could we define the fairness? That currently I do not have an answer. That is why I say the fairness, the friendliness has to be re-examined. How do we give the uh, appropriate definition for the fairness in this case? It is something we are still trying to look at. Thank you. I will have to draw a line now because uh, we need to uh, introduce the speaker. So thanks a lot again. <laughs> Our second speaker is available for offline questions also during lunch or perhaps during the banquet tonight.